like investors. Good morning, everyone. Yes, so we need to be singing here. Yeah, the buzz here is too much. Please bring down the, yeah, thank you. So, um, I, I hope we all know why we're here, right? Uh, some people are not responding, please. I hope we all know the reason why we're here. Okay, interesting. So, um, since we know why we're here, I can guarantee you that you're going to have a fun field time here in terms of knowledge, in terms of information. And I'm sure, and I'm sure most of you have heard that um, information is currency. Do you agree with me on that? Information is currency, yeah. So um, as we got that, somebody reached out to me yesterday and he said, I have this amount of money and the money has been lying following the bank for about three years or thereabout. And so he said, oh, this bank, they used to give me interest. When I see the interest, my bell is always sweet. I said, how much is interest? He said, 20,000. I said, okay, every month. Interesting. I said, okay, so do you know that three years ago, if you had converted that money into dollars, and by now, do you know how much you'd have been earning. I'm sure you'd have doubled or tripled that money at the time. So when he heard that, the person that was celebrating and saying that, ah, 20,000 every month, he became so cold. And he now sounds foolish, 20,000, compared to converting money into dollars. So that's why he said information is what? Currency. And that's why you are here, trust me. I'm sure that at the end of today, you will come and thank me and thank the team for, for uh, putting this program together. And so, uh, before we start, um, I'd like uh, someone to pray for us. So we'll do both the Christian and the Muslim. So uh, we can start with uh, the Christian. So we'll end with, uh, we'll volunteer. So we start with the prayers. Anybody? In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. Thank you for the privilege of giving to us to gather today. Heavenly Father, we ask for wisdom, we ask for knowledge, and we ask for understanding in Jesus' name, O Lord. We ask, O Lord, that the Bible says, O Lord, that Father, you increase our greatest and you comfort us, O Lord. Father, at the end of this lecture, we ask, O Lord, that you comfort us with sound health in Jesus' name, O Lord. You comfort us with profit in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. That we we'll always remember today and say, the day I attend this lecture, I become a better person in Jesus' name, O Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please, let's appreciate him. So, um, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you for that uh, wonderful rendition. So, um, quickly, if you have been attending Sam Rija's program, let's say from 2019 to date, please, can you signify? Let's say from 29 or 2020. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, Stella has been attending as well. So um, Stella will come and talk about um, how the experience has been so far from, from 2019 you know, till this time. And I also have things to say, but because of time, I'll just, uh, just make it brief. I remember we did one in, at, in Cheratin, I think that was in 2021. And it was really an eye-opener for a lot of people that attended that event. That's, that was the investor's corner at the time. And for those that invested at the time, whether in, um, they invested in cash, property, in 2023, we've seen a lot of testimonies coming from that, you know, just from that event alone. And, you know, we've been standing strong even up until now. So um, I think Stella has one or two things to say about her. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Stella Wechwe. Good morning, everyone. I want to especially welcome you to today's event. Um, out of the millions of activities that you could have been doing, you decided to be here. And it shows that we're very intentional with our lives. It shows that we're very serious. Beyond just being here, you also came in early. So I would like you to celebrate yourselves. Please give yourselves a round of applause. Welcome your neighbor to your right, to your left. If you've not met them already, you know, just get to know their name, what they do. Tell them welcome. I'm happy to see you. Thank God for life. You know, compliment them if you really like their outfit or their footwear or something, you know. 
smile at your neighbor. <laughs> There will be light at the end of the tunnel. Don't worry. Nigeria will be greater. And it's our collective responsibility to make our nation greater. Um, the very interesting fact is that the nation is made up of individuals, and individuals come from families. If we can get it right as an individual and in our families, the nation would ultimately become right. If you tell yourself, I'm going to be a good parent, it means that every child that comes out of you, you take responsibility to ensure that you train the child with the right values and virtue so that when they go into the society, they would be a value-adding person and not a problem or an issue. Because everyone we complain about today came from a family. So I just want us to make that decision. So even if we shout and call our leaders, preparing your mind to know that today is not just um, any other day. So I want us to be intentional. Whatever it is that you hear, you would hear a lot of things, you know, jot all of them down and tell yourself, I'm going to start with maybe the, this first one or this second one. A lot of people have terrible experiences investing in Nigeria and, you know, investing in different businesses themselves. I would not save. I'd rather just eat all my money and enjoy it and know that it entered my stomach. But really, how far can you go with that? There's a way to go about these things. And that's why we have this event. And Dr. Lumide Emmanuel, Sam Orija, and Sholakwe Bada, all of our speakers, will be sharing deep insights. And these are insights that have come from their years of experience. Imagine Sholakwe Bada. She's a lawyer. Um, she's going to be sharing on due diligence, the things to look out for before investing in the real estate sector in Nigeria. A lot of people tell you that oh, we're doing real estate, but there might actually be something else that you're doing. So Shalakwe Bada is going to be sharing with us today specific things to look out for so that we do not make mistakes. I know that we're going to make mistakes, but let our mistakes be fresh. You should not repeat the mistake that another person has made. I mean, that's why it is called experience. You do not have to learn from your own experience, but learn from other people's experience. And you know, the way um, this Chinese adage says, it says that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. But you know, today has presented us with another opportunity to plant that tree. Whatever it is that you learn today, ensure that you do not procrastinate. Ensure that you do not procrastinate. Because at the beginning of the year, we knew how much dollar was. And we know how much dollar is. But we don't know where dollar is going. So imagine if you had, you know, done some form of investment in dollars without stressing, without sweating, how much you'd have made. Think about it too. If you had bought maybe Mac, um, Banana Island in 1993 and how much it is now without an effort. So this is an opportunity for us today to make the most of everything that we learn. So we're going to be going straight into our first session this morning. And our first session will be taken by Sholak Bada. And I'll just read a brief um, 
profile. Mr. Shalakbe Bada is an alumni of Olabisi Onabanjo University in Agoyewoye, Ogun State, where she graduated top of her class in 2009. She proceeded to the Nigerian Law School campus and was called to the Nigerian Bar Association in 2010. She has worked in various industries and law firms, and her area of expertise is in civil litigation and real estate practice. She has about 14 years cognitive experience in property management and acquisition, and she will be speaking to us today on due diligence in the real estate sector with a round of applause and a standing ovation. If you will permit, please let's make welcome Mrs. Sholakwe Bada Esquire. Please celebrate her. Do you know what it means to be a lawyer? Please celebrate her. Thank you. Please sit down. Please sit down. It's not that hard to be a lawyer. Just five years um, university education, then one year law school. But that one year law school is about 10 years. Like, what you are going to read in one year is what you are going to read for about 10 years. So, it's not that difficult. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. I'm seeing pretty and beautiful faces. It's so good to be here. So, I'll be taking you through due diligence in real estate investments. But before I start, I'm going to give some scenarios and examples. So, I'm going to tell this story about Ikorodu. Yes. Okay, can I actually hear me? I think I have a pretty... If you speak in court, you need to have a huh? Hello? loud voice to be able to talk to the judge. Hello? Okay. So, in Ikorodu, someone bought a property 25 years ago. So, after buying the property, he erected four-bedroom duplex for his family. They started living there. I think they moved there about 20 years ago. They started living there. They are fine. They are okay. The children were going to school. They are now in university. At the point of the children being in university, the government came and said the property is under acquisition. And they are going to pull down all the properties that is there. They served them first notice. Of course, Nigerians, after serving the notice, they say, ah, it's not possible. I'm sorry for speaking Yoruba for the not speaking Yoruba, but you know, there's some things that we do. There's this um, confidence that once you bought a property or once you invested in a property, we are good to go. But it's not, it's not all about investing. It's all about investing in good property. Last year, the government came and they pulled down everything that is in that location. All the properties there, they pulled it down. Why? Does anybody know the reason why? Hmm? Why? You don't know. The property is under government acquisition. Because according to the Land Use Act, 1978, it was um, President Obasanjo that did that law. According to that law, all the, go all the land in the Noban region, and even in the rural area, the ones in the urban region belong to the government, while the ones in the rural area belong to the local government. But they are all invested in the government. So, according to that law, all the land in the urban region belongs to the state government. However, the governor of that state is holding the land in trust for all of us. So, that is why that before you have a government property or before you have a government title, you need to get consent or C of O from the government. So, the property is under acquisition. They pulled it down. No documents. The government pays compensation if they acquire a property that has um, C of O. But in this instance, it's a government. No compensation. And that's how, that's how the land, the land, the investment investment land, land everything went down, down the drain. drain. That's, that's one, one example. example. The, the second, second example is the story of Agodofis. 
I live in my body of two. In December 2021, I was going to court very early in the morning. I was on my way to court and I came out and I saw that. Ah, what was this boha all about? What was happening here? You couldn't go out of the estates. People that are coming in couldn't come into the estate too. We were just there. They locked us inside. Because the people outside, we don't want them to gain access. They came with soldiers, sheriffs of the court. Why? The Supreme Court has given them judgment that it is the family that owns that land. Hope I'm not confusing you. You know, I talk about government first. Now I'm talking about family. That it is the family that owns the land. And the family has approached the court that government acquired that land from them for public purpose. They want to build schools. They want to build hospitals. They want to build library. They want to build archives. They want to build this. They want to build that. And after collecting the land, the government started allocating it to people. So the purpose in which the land was acquired from, from the family, it was not the purpose that it was used for. So because of that, from the high courts, to the court of appeal, to the Supreme Court, they won at the Iga family. And after winning, they came and said they want to execute the judgment. They came with, of course, with soldiers, with police, with everything. They wanted to gain access to the property, to the estates, but of course, too, the estate association said no. It is government that gave us allocation. Go and meet the government back. So we had to resist, as in resist. Eventually, the governor of Lagos State came. Tasan Olu came and pleaded this. They are still at the settlement stage. They are still trying to settle. But there is a pending judgment, and it is a valid judgment. Now, that allocation, anybody that bought land in that property got allocation from the government, or maybe bought from someone that got allocation from the government. So what was the issue? So, I just gave this example to know that in land transaction, you need to have a kind of peace of mind. And the peace of mind is doing your due diligence. Making sure that whatever you are investing in is number one, genuine. Number two, you are buying from the direct source. You know, a land can be genuine, but you are not buying from the direct source. You are not investing from the direct source. So you need to have that kind of peace of mind. You need to have that kind of assurance. Although, even as a lawyer, I cannot give you 100% assurance. No. I can only say, okay, 90%. I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do. But eventually, just like the case of Magodo, from the government and it still has issues but at least you need to have the kind of that 90 percent assurance that oh whatever i'm investing in i'm investing in a good property and if it is a company that you are investing in i'm investing in a good company that is going to do their due diligence and whatever they are doing that that have necessary professionals we have so many quacks around it's all in, in all professions. I'm sure we heard about the, the mobile case and everything that happened yesterday. And it was so unfortunate. So in every profession, there are quacks. There are quacks. So you need to ensure that whatever company you are investing in, they have necessary professionals in their employment. They have people that are advising them. So that at the end of the day, the investments will not go down the drain. So how to do due diligence? How do we do due diligence? Well, as a lawyer, I'm supposed to say, oh, just consult a lawyer. And the lawyer will do the due diligence for you and give you your reports. Oh, I had to go ahead to buy the property or not. I know most of us, we don't consult lawyers. Because we feel, ah, lawyers are expensive. Lawyers, ah, they have their own problem. But <laughs> why, not, why not do what you're supposed to do now to avert that problem in the future? Hmm? You can have your own personal lawyer. It's not expensive. 
like oh this person is my personal lawyer so whenever any issue comes up i'll consult my lawyer in signing property in signing agreements in signing tenancy agreements i've seen people sign tenancy agreements that they put themselves into bondage because they did not give a lawyer to vet for them tenancy agreements oh this tenancy is for a fixed term it's going to be one year after one year if you don't pay your rent the landlord is at liberty to 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 pack your loads and put it outside and they will sign which is not supposed to be so before signing anything before appending your signature into anything consult your lawyer oh this is it oh this is what i have help me go through it if you've been doing the lawyer very well before of course you can still get don't worry let me just vet it and if it's something that is going to charge you for if charge you for it but at least you have a peace of mind that you've already consulted a lawyer before doing that thing. So, like I said, how do we do due diligence? I'm supposed to say, oh, just consult a lawyer. But I'm not going to say that only. I'm going to give you a level of knowledge because we are all here to learn. There's some things that, as a person, you're supposed to know. As a citizen of Nigeria, you're supposed to know your fundamental human rights. The rights that you have as a person. Like, you're supposed to know all those things. So, for the purpose of knowledge, I'm going to run you through some things. Then, another thing I want to say again is, you know, this is a real estate company. We are into investment. We are into funding. We would have done all those um, due diligence that you're supposed to do. We would have done it for you. So, you know that you are putting your money, at end money, into a genuine thing. And like the Stella said, Stella is the person that introduced me. Like, I also did the same thing. And my own was even 1.5 million. <laughs> like, it was so painful. It was so painful. As a lawyer, they gave me a memorandum of agreement. I signed. I went through everything. When the whole thing busted, I told myself that. Okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to sue this man for this money? Or I want to take him to the police. If I report to the police, they will ask me to be, bring facilitation fee first. If I go to court, this man is nowhere to be found. I beg, just count my loss and not do that again. So since then, but this one is not real estate investment though. This one is, um, what do they call it? Uh, this thing that they do online. Forex, it's forex trading. <laughs> So since then, there's nothing you can say. If it is not land and house, I beg, pack well. Something that I will see, I will be saying, <laughs> we see ourselves. Everything other than that, I know they do. So, like I said, we would have done, for this place, we would have done our due diligence for you. We also do not want to run into a loss. We want this to be a thriving business. We would have done everything we are supposed to do for you. So, if you are investing here. But, for yourself, and for the purpose of knowledge, what titles do people have that you can even do due diligence on? Because someone will just come and say, I have a land in Ajagbandi, and it's been sold for 3 million naira. Ah, do you want to buy it? Ah, say Ajagbandi. Ah, Properties go okay, okay. I want to buy, and before you know it, you've transferred money. That now, okay. What title do you have? What title do you have on the property? Number one is family property. You can invest in family, you can buy from family. There's nothing stopping you from buying from family, however, you must ensure that you are buying from. The, yes, you must ensure that you are buying from the real family. The people who own the land, the gong gong. Don't be saying, I'm only let go tell you, say, oh yeah, come and buy this one. And you two go, don't drop money. No, it doesn't work that way. You ask questions. But I would advise you that if you are buying the property, you should involve a lawyer. That's just my advice. Involve a lawyer. Because it's a lawyer that will be able to ask the right questions. In law, there's something we call recital. We are tracing the history of the property. 
okay, my forefather father owned this property before my forefathers owned it, before my grandfather now owned it, before I now own it, before there was now a partition, before this. And in family, in selling family property, one person knows they sell family property. One person does not sell family property. <laughs> it has to be the head of the family and the principal members. Head of the family cannot sell it. No. If, the, if the head of the family sold, the transaction is voidable. But if the members of the family, if they are the ones that sold, the, the transaction is void. That is, it is bad. You can't... You can't even rectify it. For the head of the family, you can still rectify it by giving the other principal members something. But if this is the principal members that are sold without the consent of the head of the family, you can't. You have to buy again. That's where ratification comes in. I said people will be ratifying. But, ah, we will ratify today. They will ratify tomorrow. Before you know it, another set of people will come again and come and... Okay. Thank you. Another set. This one is not working though. Another set will come again next tomorrow to say, oh, we are the real owners. We are the... So that's why people try as much as possible to shy away from buying from the family directly. It's better you leave it to a property company to have done all those ones. Like, property companies too, they have their own issues. So they are not going to shoot that code. Hello. Tell us to you. Hello. Property company. So that's why you need to know the company you are investing in and check that track record. Check what they have done. So then, if you are buying from property, there must be evidence. If there is no evidence, I think there's a saying that goes now. You will explain tire if there is no evidence. Yeah. So you need to have evidence. And evidence can be a receipt or a deed of assignment from the family. A receipt or a deed of assignment from the family. Then another title that you can people can have on a property is government allocation. They have letter of allocation. Government do that a lot. Before you get your C of O, you need to have like a government allocation or you bought from the family. You know, C of O is like a secondary title. It's not like it's not a primary title. It's a layer. You can't just approach the government now and say, oh, I want to apply for C of O. They will ask you, how did you get the land? So, is that you have receipts or deed of assignment from family before you are able to process your C of O? Or you have allocation from the government. You have a government allocation from the government. So, that's true. Then we have the certificate of occupancy. Yes. In this, our client, we place so much emphasis on certificate of occupancy. But for we lawyers, we know that certificates of occupancy can be defective. All the people that have properties in Magodo, they have certificates of occupancy and see what happens again. Because it must rest on something. You cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stand. It will not stand. No more that called non abet You can't give what you don't have. So, the root of Tai Chu, like I said before, the recital, the root of Tai Chu must be genuine. So you are buying from the direct family, the, the, the family that the land owning family is gone gone, or you are getting a government allocation. So that is where your C of O will rest on. And you know C of O is not in perpetuity. It has a reversionary interest. It can reverse. It's for 99 years. Now, we don't know what is going to happen after 99 years. The government is going to acquire the land back or they give you rights of renewal. For we lawyers, we lean more on. They are going to give rights of renewal. Okay. They are going to give rights of renewal after 99 years, but it's not up to 99 years. 1978 is like about 45 years. So. We are the 45th year now. We still have 55 years, more than 55 years to go, 99 years. About 60 something years to go to know, um, 64 years to go to know what's going to happen. 54, okay. 
Sorry, I'm a lawyer. I'm not good in mathematics. I'm so sorry. Yes. So, that's it. Then we have lease old interest too. The person can have, have a deed of lease or deed of sublease. Like I said, certificate of occupancy is for 99 years. There are some people that they sell to other people again and they don't give them absolute assignments. They just give them like a certain years out of the um, years that they have. So once you are buying something that has a leasehold interest or sublease, you know that you are not owning that property forever and ever. You are just owning it for a certain number of years, maybe for like 70 years or for 60 years or for 50 years. So you know you are owning it for that time. So then we have deed of assignment too. Deed of assignment is absolute. Like, let me try to differentiate between registered deed of assignment and unregistered deed of assignment. You know, I said before when I was explaining family property that you must have evidence. Yes. So if you have a deed of assignment, if you bought from family and you have a deed of assignment, the deed of assignment, if you did not register it, if you did not go and do C of O on it, it's just an unregistered deed of assignment. That doesn't mean you don't have title. You have title. Your title is the deed of assignment that is with you. You hold on to it. You die. You transfer it to your children. The only thing is just that you don't have government title on that property. Do we understand? Yes. The only thing is that you don't have government title on that property. Then there is the registered deed of assignment. In which, do, that's the one people call consent. Consent. Oh, what title do you have? I have consent. Consent is not a title. It's just a procedure. It's a process. Like a process. Let me call it a process. Yes, it's a process. It's, it's just the governor's signature on that your deed of assignment. So the main title there is registered deed of assignment. A registered deed of assignment comes under certificate of occupancy. You must have had a government title before you do a registered deed of assignment. Do you get me? Yes, so you must have had a government title, which is certificate of occupancy, or conveyance. Conveyance, indenture, all those ones. Conveyance is what we use before 1978. You know, I said before, I said, under the land use act 1978, that is where certificate of occupancy came into being. Where the properties were invested in the governor, and the governor will give you just right of occupancy, which is the certificate of occupancy for 99 years. So let's now assume that you have a certificate of occupancy, you want to transfer your property. What you are going to do is a deed of assignment. Like you are signing all your rights, all your remaining years in that property to the buyer. If the buyer now went ahead to get a governor's consent and register it, it becomes a registered deed of assignment. Or for the people that had conveyance to before 1978, they still have to get consent. According to Section 22 of the Land Use Act, whatever transaction that happens on land that has a government title to, must get the consent of the governor before you do it. They do get consent to on deed of this. Can I use this? Yes. They do get consent to on deed of lease because also an assignment, but it's just that it's not absolute. It's not absolute. It's not in perpetuity. There is still right of reversal. There's still reversionary interest. So that's it. Then we have survey plan. Survey plan is not a title. It's just a description of what you are owning. This is your land. You are owning it from point A to point B to point C to point D. So that's the description. You are describing your land. So that is survey plan. However, survey plan is very, very, very important. Because without description of your property, there's no way you can know that this is where your property starts from and this is where it ends. So you must have, even if you are not going to register or get a government title to on your property, it's better you do survey plan. Even if you are buying from property company. Hmm? After getting your deed of assignments from the property company, go ahead and do your survey plan 
And the property company can also do for you. They have surveyors, they have professionals. You know, I mentioned it before, that the first thing you should look out for is, are there professionals in that company? Do they have a surveyor? Do they have a lawyer? Ask questions. The surveyor can do it for you. And you get your survey, you get your deed of assignment, you have your title. Even if you die, your children, they take over from you. So, that's it. Then, where do we do due diligence? Where? You know, like I said before, I said, I would have said, consult your lawyer. Your lawyer will do everything for you. But for the purpose of knowledge, too. D diligence is done in the Soviet General's office. The, the Soviet General has, in this, the old um, of this Lagos state, there's a map. It's there. So once the land is under government acquisition, it will show. Once they put the coordinates of the land, the pickings of the land, once they place it there, it was, ah, no, this one is under government acquisition. Don't go near it. Then, in the lands registry too, the properties that, about 70% of the land that we have don't have government title. to. It's a pandemic. It's not supposed to be. But you know Nigeria, we are just trying to have data. Even um, as a person, now you can't do anything without your NIN again. Before, you can't do anything without anything. Nobody is even going to ask you that, where are you from? So many non-Nigerians are claiming Nigeria. And everything goes. So we are just getting there gradually. About 70% 70, 70 of properties do not have government title which is not supposed to be. The government is supposed to have data of every land. But you can't, I can't blame the government totally too because originally, government land is alien to us. Customarily, historically, land belongs to the family, to the community. So it was 1978 land use act that transferred ownership of land to the government. So originally, land belonged to the family. And there's still land owning families. People that are familiar with Lekki, Aja, like, we still have land owning families. And outside Lagos too, we still have land owning families. We still have lands in our villages that we say, oh, this is our land. It doesn't belong to the government. If the government wants to come, we will resist them. We take them to court. At the court, we say, oh, Originally, land belongs to the family. However, if you want to have a government title, you need to convert that your family property to government title by applying for a C of O and getting a C of O. You understand? So, that is how in the land, then all the C of O's that has been issued, all the conveyance before C of O came that has been issued, they have all the history at Alausa, is there. You know Lagos, you know Lagos colony. There used to be a Lagos colony. There is, then there is Western region. So even the ones that are at Ibadan, they still have some of them in Alausa. So all those from 18, uh, 1861. Yes, the British came in 1861. From 1860 something, they have the, they have it. They have the conveyance. They have all the they have all the documents there. So if someone is telling you that ah, I'm selling so 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 to you, that's a conveyance. What's the title number? You do your search in Alausa, in Lands Registry, and you get your your results. Yes, Lands Registry, Bureau of Land. So then we have LSDPC. LSDPC is Lagos State Development. Ah, you are telling me my time is ah. Okay, <laughs> I'm not even taking questions. No problem. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So. I would take questions after my lectures, right? Or after the whole, I know I should take it after my class. I have another Zoom meeting, so yes. Yes, I will, but after, after. <laughs> okay, okay. Then we have LSDPC. LSDPC, Lagos State Development Property Company. Their office is just around the Lupeju here. I've done so many transactions with them. What they do is they get allocation from the government. When they get allocation from the government, they build 
and they sell to people, then they will not give you sublease. If the government gave them 90 years, they give you 90. If the government gives them 99 years, according to CEO, then they give you 90 years. So when they give you 90 years, then you can be transferring. So many people can be transferring, transferring, transferring. So it's a very good place to, to acquire property. Then we have Wemabod Limited. Wemabod belongs to Western Nigeria. They have their estates all around. I don't need Jones, Wemabon estates and everything. They do have. But most of their um most of their years has been used. There are some that they gave since 1945, 1950. So Bowers will be beware. Caveat for that one. Yes, I think that will be all. Thank you very much. Can I just take one or two? Let me just take one or two questions and yes, any question? Yes, please. I bought a land somewhere around, um, where is this place called? Uh, just opposite one of these universities outside there. But the thing is that they gave me receipt, the family. But you said something now. You said that this is the family that is supposed to do the deed of assignment because I want to go ahead to do the deed of assignment. Sir. So is it the family that is supposed to do it for me or I'm the one that is supposed to do it myself? Sir, how it is done, you get a lawyer to draft the deed of assignment, you get all their names and their designation, you get a lawyer to draft for you, then you take it to them for signing. It is the buyer that's, that drafts a um, deed of assignment or and pays for the deed of assignment. It's not the duty of the seller to draft. Um, so it is the buyer that drafts and, sell, uh, and pays for the deed of assignment. So any other question, please? Yes, sir. I'm, I've not used my five minutes, too. I'm just trying to finish my five minutes. Good morning, all. Good morning. Uh, my question is very brief. Uh, please, I would like to find out, um, is it possible to um, make inquiry online regarding government acquisition? If it's possible, how do we do that? And also, I have a couple of friends. I know of so many people who have um, properties for years, like personal friends. They don't have, they don't have a lot of, most of them, in fact, they don't have um, this... Um, documents and titles. So is this something to worry about? Is this something they should, you know, and so many of them, so I don't know. That's a very fantastic question and it's going to take me to so many places. Let me just quickly explain. Um, for, there's no online search. No, you have to be physically there to give them your, no online search yet. We are not there yet in Nigeria, but they do have the master plan, yes. Yes, like I said before, at the beginning of this um, lecture, I said something. I said you can have your property. As long as it's not under government acquisition, you are sure that it's not under government acquisition. You are there. The government does not worry about it. They are not concerned. 70% of the properties are not registered. However, you cannot use that property for any other thing other than living in it. You can't use it as collateral. You can't use it for anything. And the value that it will even command, it will be different. For a property that has a C of O and a property that does not have C of O, there's a difference in purchase price. So that's another thing. Then another aspect is government acquisition. Even if the government gives you C of O, according to Section 28 and 29 of Early Land Use Act, the government can acquire any property for public purpose. Hmm? Please, let's get that straight. For public purpose, you can't acquire it and go and give it to someone else. No. I will fight you till anything. But for public purpose, they can acquire it. But when they are acquiring it, they will pay compensation if it has a government title. If it doesn't have a government title, no compensation. Bye-bye. Count your loss. That's it. So, one more question. Anne. Yes, yes, please. Good morning, everybody. All right, so my question is for my mom, actually. They're having an issue now in the family. There is this house that is for a dad, and they don't have the papers or anything, and they want to sell it. Okay. Uh, so I told them that if I have anybody I can ask advice for, I will do so, and I'm seeing this as an opportunity. What can they do to get the land documented back again? Consult me. I'm okay. not going to answer that question. Can you drop your Thank number? You, Can you drop your number? Yes, I will. I will. See me after something. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.
Please, let's appreciate um, Madam Sholakbe. Baba, you have to pay because I'll show you. <laughs> it is not free. It is not free. Yeah, so. And for those of you that are having the same issues, you can just reach out to. If you want to see, I just reach out to um, any of the team. They will find a way to get our number. And in that process, uh, you can just do me 5%, you know. So as you argue, so, uh, Nigeria is all about business, my brother. You know what we're talking about, yeah? <laughs> so uh, that's how it works. So um, I hope you all enjoyed that lecture. Was it informative enough? So if I say information is currency, do you not agree with me? Uh, you see, this is what we do, especially times I've traveled, you know, outside, outside Nigeria. I remember, you remember the time we went to, do you know a kingdom? Remember? Okay, yeah. This, it's, no, 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 in spirit. If I've not been there, I won't pronounce it that way now. I say, you know a kingdom. Yeah. So if you can pronounce it like that, it means I've been there several times. I've, I've been to different cities all over the world, but eventually we still came back to... Or your state in Okio. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's, uh, you said, there, there's no place like home. I, I can, I can confidently, you know, tell you that. Nigeria is very sweet. And if you, if, see, the truth is that, if, no, no, it's not that if you have money, even if you are broke, you can live in Nigeria. Uh, see, I remember there were times where you go to a restaurant and, see, especially Lagos. Lagos is very sweet. If you go to some of these Southeast, you know, a door and all of these places. You understand what I'm talking about. In Lagos here, yeah, you go to a book and you say, Ejeba Mita. For those that don't understand you about rice hundred naira, but more fifteen naira, ewa fifteen naira. Then, then, then you do spaghetti fifteen naira. Then there's dodo. So by the time you round everything up, it's like. No, no, 500k. I'm, I'm talking about the, the Jonathan there. See, let, you won't be shocked that, you will be shocked that my, my brother here, Sam Orija, he knows those combinations, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss that, you know. Uh, yeah, so, um, so in Lagos here, much, much easier. I just do all those things. But I remember when I, I went to, to Calabar, so uh, when I go to the city of Calabar, very interesting states, everywhere is neat, you know. Very wonderful state. And when I got there, I, I sat and I said, oh, please, uh, I want to get something. So the Lagos boy in me started saying, please, just make it, uh, that rice, 150. The woman said, for where? He said, we don't do that here. <laughs> when, I began, when I began to do calculation, a plate of rice with one meat, as at, I'm saying as at 2016 or thereabouts, it's 500 naira. And there is this uh, ugu they will put on it uh, to spice it up. And so when you are eating, uh, nobody <laughs> you will just be seeing different things with the ugu. And, and, and I always say this, please, whatever tribe that you have, everybody has good food. I don't know why people abuse your about food. They say the only thing we have is a we do and uh, a we do and beg you. Come on. We love it. We, we, we love it. We love it. No, we love it that way. So if you are not content with the we do and beg you, yeah, you can do you can do something else. So, um, we, we'll, we're supposed to do something now, but I'll, I'll postpone that till when we're having, uh, before uh, Dr. Lumide Emmanuel, you know, comes up. Uh, yesterday, for those of you, I don't know if you've, if you've done tooth extraction before. Um, you extracted your tooth from, uh, a dentist actually did that for you. I don't know if you know how that experience is. So I did tooth extraction on Thursday, and it was a terrible one. I uh, couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep, uh, yeah, I mean, Thursday to Friday morning. And so before, so Thursday evening, usually like that, so a couple of friends came around, and in the evening, uh, they brought shawarma. I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> they even bought, they, they were just, they don't even bought spaghetti. As I was about to see spaghetti, I don't know where the demon is coming from. They say, put it in your mouth, and you will see what is going to happen. I abandoned spaghetti. I say, what is going on? I was looking at them as they were eating. I started praying. I said, if you can convert this time, give me the pain tomorrow. Let me enjoy now. <laughs> the spirit said, no. You must feel the pain now. They brought a lot of things, bought sausage, and I could not eat. And it was so painful to the point that overnight, oh, do you know that 
in my night sleep, I was waking up intermittently. So I, have, I was having different dreams. So one of the terrible dreams is that I was writing final exam. And so in the final exam, the lecturer is saying that I'm giving you five minutes. So after five minutes, I just discovered that everybody stood up. And I went outside. I was asking, I said, please, is this exam done? They said, no, uh, you are the only one remaining left. I said, how? <laughs> I said, how now? Then the lecturer looked at me and said, you know what? Just stay where you are. Then there's this particular guy. Do you know what? I graduated like 2015. And do you know what? There's this particular guy in our class that time. We call him Afar. I mean, I've not seen, maybe you've seen people like that in your university days. What Afar does specifically is this. So when, when it's exam time, when it's coming in, before we even start, he will stand beside the exam door. If you see his beard, his beard is close to this place. And if you greet him, say, Afar, oh, the car, oh. Afar. He's not going to answer anybody. And when he gets in, he looks at the first question. Oh, this guy starts writing. He will write page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. So virtually everybody in the class will be wondering that, ah, show me I know reading it. But that was in 100 level, actually. So you know when you now get to 200, it doesn't mean that before the lake, you can come there. So after, after the exam, he will now come out. He will be smiling to everybody. So we didn't know whether it was a trick or what. So when the result came out, I saw a you know, they 40 40 Larry. You see, he was so good at something, but I think the problem was documenting. If he's in this room now, whatever everybody's saying, he has it in his head. But I think the issue was, you know, having to document, yeah, document that thing. So, in his 300 level, so when everybody is coming to the class, we don't even greet Afa again. anybody. So we already knew exactly, you know, how all these things were. So that my dream. Don't worry, I don't want to say what happened in that dream, but let's just leave that dream because there were some annoying things that happened in that dream. I, I was waking up at intervals and it was really, really annoying. Having different dreams of, oh, my mom is saying that even in the pain, come and wash plates, come and do this. I say. <laughs> who does who does this so um right about now sam i don't know if i've exhausted my time on that okay i think i still i still have got uh some i still got some few minutes here and if you are from if you are from top page if you got this information from top page please can you signify please you guys should appreciate yourself now come on And, and one thing I know about top radio guys, top radio listeners, is that the most of them are from Ikorodu. Sorry to say that. So, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not showing sure you shit. No, no. You are waiting for me at the gate. See, let me tell you. If not for, if not for, if not for Ikorodu people. I don't know if top radio will have listeners. See, shout out to them. You guys are amazing. You see, I was always on the show. Um, I think from from 20, 2018 to twenty twenty. So I stopped I stopped coming on top. I, was, I stopped coming on the show. Then I don't know if many of you know the name Long John. Yes, yes this is the Long John. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So this is yeah. So this is this is the Long John. Yeah. It's, yeah. That guy that we that that guy that we enter in public transport and then. So should I continue that conversation? You know what I'm talking about. So, let, <laughs> so uh, let's just let's just leave that. You know, I was talking about Sam. You know, um, how many of you know Sam Orija here? Yeah. We've been hearing. Have you seen his face before? So, for some of you, I've not seen. Okay, wait. If you've not seen Sam's face before, please signify by a raise of hand. So, so, so when listening to Sam, like, how do you picture his height? He's, I don't know. Have you ever pictured how tall he is? Yes. Oh, he's pictured how tall he is. You will see that he's one guy that has big muscles from the And you know what? He talks confidently. If you don't invest in this thing, your money is gone. He does not joke. But ladies and gentlemen, what if I tell you that the sum, <laughs> the, sum the sum you are envisaging is what? Don't cover your face. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the Sam, the Sam you are envisaging is a very wonderful young man. You know, he's been my friend for a very long time. 
And um, so when I said earlier that we know how to do akopo, it's not for your consumption. There are places where we do the akopo. Sam, should I tell them? It's me tell them. Okay. So, <laughs> so we'll leave that for now. So ladies and gentlemen, right about now, I'd like to bring on this side of the platform, Sam Orija, as he dissects. Oh yeah, now, if you want to work out with a standing innovation, you can do that too. Thank you very much. You can have your seat. Over to you now. Thank you, John. If you are not a Madrid fan here, please get out. <laughs> I, I don't joke about my club, please. We have to finish before four. We have a match by four. Man, you fans. Man, you fans are here. You, you have the guts to come here. Where is that bouncer? Um, I want, first and foremost, to, you guys to please appreciate yourself. Um, I'm always glad when I see people turn out to come and learn because that is what precedes earning. Learning precedes earning. It's only um, in the dictionary that earning precedes learning. Um, today, I want to talk about a topic called just before you invest that money. And um, big thank you to our solicitor in the house, um, Sholakwe Bada who is a lawyer of the organization. Please appreciate our fantastic job. If you have not bought land before, don't buy land without fulfilling the necessary five stages. I'm talking from experience of buying land and losing land. Do you know what it means for you to lose a land and see it mature in capital gain and you are crying? Land where you buy maybe 500,000, you don't see them for your hire, become 30 million. And you lost the land. <laughs> may that not be your story. And if that is your story, may it, may, it, may it not happen again. Today, there are some things that you are going to do just before you invest your money. Now, like I normally say, we teach not just for you guys to patronize us. If you patronize us, that would be good. It will make our business continue to be in existence, right? But we also teach you that you can also become your own financial coach. You can become your own financial consultant. So you can also teach other people and spread the gospel. Because we have a lot of Nigerians that think investment is a disease. They hear investment and they are, they are repulsive. You are repelling wealth. You will stay in poverty. Um, so the time for jokes are, are gone now. It's time to be serious. <laughs> Um, so there are some things that you need to do before you invest your money. And I'm not going to be talking about plan, plan first, learn, uh, learn your risk appetite, all those things. Those are not the things you need to do. You need to start from the beginning. And that's the first thing. You need to be an investor. You need to be an investor. What you are expecting me to say is what you should do as an investor. And that's wrong. That's the reason why many of you lose money in investment because you are behaving as in, like an investor without becoming an investor first. So you are doing what other people are doing. Everybody is going to social so platform today in this generation. You are rushing there. You think that you have investment mentality. You have financial information. You are acting. You are not because you have not become an investor. The, most, the, the major problem is that many people act or like to do like investors without being one. So it has to be internal. You need to become an investor. Investment mentality is what you need for wealth. And wealth is about who you are, not what you are or what you own. So let's take an example. One, two, three, four, five. These five brothers here go ahead to invest in a particular property or in a particular investment scheme. All of you just had the stuff for 500,000. All of you put 500,000 there. You don't know your current you don't know his current state. You don't know his current state. You don't know his current state. But all of you are friends. So because of peer pressure and you don't want to be left behind, you all invest money. Then you go home and start crying. Meanwhile, he goes home and is happy because he has put some things in place. Do you understand? So 
you have to understand many things. Listen, a dog does not need Riaza to bark. A dog is not a dog because it barks. A dog barks because it is a dog. An investor does not invest because it's an investor. An investor invests because he's an investor. An investor invests because he is one, not because others are doing so. When you become an investor, you will have your own roadmap for your own family investments. So whatever Sam Oguja is saying on radio will not influence you like that. It's just going to help you direct your path. Do you understand? I will make it clearer so that you don't um, get lost. Why am I saying this? If, for example, I have a, I have a dog in Ogba, security dog. My people here have been, have been scared for me to bring it to the office here because that, that, that girl is very wicked. She's mean. In fact, she backs at me sometimes until I give her a slap. But if, she, if for example, that bouncer enters, enters my house and the dog backs and the bouncer doesn't run, or the bouncer uh, suppresses the dog. Does it mean that if another person enters the house, the, the dog will not back again? It will still back, right? Good. If an investor who has become an investor invests and fails, he will still invest again. But if an investor that is not an investor invests and fails, he will start calling every investment scam. That is what we have in Nigeria. You Because you, you did what other people are doing, you are not an investor. That's why I see people, you go on social media, a company that, because delay is not the fraud. Are you not in business? Delay is not the fraud. So, for example, let me give you a scenario. <laughs> I, I like real estate, so I'll use real estate as an example. We want to build, we want to, from October, so October, we, we started some projects in Obafemi, Aolowo, hostel projects. Now, let's say we want to build, let's say, because most times I don't use to say things until you see it. So let's say we want to build 200 units of apartments there. And we require about 5 billion to do that apartment. If at 5 billion, when dollar was 356 naira, was the BOQ. And like we know in Nigeria, and we'll come to that segment very shortly. Financing for projects is a major issue. Even financial institutions, institutions don't readily give organizations money to go and fulfill projects. Now, the BOK was around 365 to a dollar for materials and everything. And of course, the company will still put contingency for inflation. But you know that <laughs> from 365 now, we are in worth. Where are we? Good. We are in 1,000 now. And my daddy here now has bought a unit of the apartment off plan at 20 million for a one bedroom apartment. And that was how we did the BOQ at that price, even including all those things. Then there's variation. The people that understand, the, the clients that understand in our company are investors. The clients that don't understand are the ones that do like investors. So they go on social media and say, you promised me a house at 20 million. You promised me something at 20 million. Now the BOQ has become 55 million for that apartment. Are you following me? Because I, I want us to change that. Because the first step for you to become an investor is to change your belief, value, and mindset about investment. Many of us grew up in homes that our mindset, values, and belief systems has affected us in a negative manner we don't know. So, that scenario happens, it now becomes 55 million. What they start shouting is, refund my money. Meanwhile, you did not chop their money, you used their money to buy cement, iron rod, everything, and it has gone that way. So what am I saying? You need to become an investor first. And I'll show you how you can do that. Very so, so that when you are investing in companies, okay, let me, let me just give you the entire picture. You become an investor first, then you now start, so to become an investor first, you have to change your belief, mindsets, and value system. Then you now start doing like an investor. That's you changing your behaviors, habits. Then you now start achieving like an investor. So many of us want to get to the achieving part. 
That's why you are telling people to give you 50% in six months. I, I, so you, we are all guilty here. Oh, be, some of us are guilty here. And after today, your deliverance comes. <laughs> Say amen. amen. We are human beings, not human doings. So you, are, you have to be first before you do. I'm not going to tell you uh, invest your risk where your risk appetite is low, blah, blah, blah. All those sorts are elementary things because it's not solving the problem. You have, you have been hearing that for how many years? Has it solved any problem today? Because the fundamental root is very poor. You people gave me 20 minutes to talk. I mean that I'm the host. It's my head time, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is my office. <laughs> okay, so when we learn that we are, we are human beings, we will not start changing our mindsets and beliefs and value systems. Some of us are lucky to come from homes where the mindsets, maybe your father has broken that yoke of that belief system and that mindset. You know, it's easier for you. Some of you are the first generation that will break that yoke in your family. Some of us have not broken that yoke yet. So you need to break free. This is a warfare. It has, it, it has to do with internally. So how do you become an investor? Number one, by eliminating faulty investment mindsets, beliefs, and values. Number one, by eliminating faulty investment mindsets, beliefs, and values. Can somebody give me an example? Of a 40 investment mindset, belief, or value. What do you think is an example of a 40, 40 investment belief? <laughs> Investors that want to get 50,000 today. Okay. So that's, that's even a practical example. Let me give you examples. Sam is talking about investment because he is rich. That's a 40 mindset, that's a 40 belief system. That rich people talk about investment because they are rich. No. Rich people talk about investment because it made them rich. <laughs> Who talks about poverty? Poor people. They talk about poverty because they are poor. Rich people talk about uh, investment because it is what took them to that level. So you don't envy rich people when they're talking about like, ah, he has come again, he's motivating us. It, it's not about motivation. This is about results speaking. You don't, you don't, you don't envy results. You don't argue against results. You don't argue against results. So because of that, since you cannot argue against results, you, you start putting conspiracy theories in your head. It's probably doing fraud. You believe the devil more than you believe God. So you see somebody that is doing well, you feel that the person is doing something bad. Now, a person can be doing something bad, but that should not be your belief system in the first time, instance. If that is your belief system in the first instance, you are a poor person. And you have to change. You have to change. And many of us, because we are not well-traveled, we, uh, we have not gone to places. So you don't see young people making money. In Nigeria, you have to, you know, you know we have to understand the scenario. So we came from the agricultural age, where our fathers were in the farm. To the industrial age where all of us will go to work nine to five and be making peanuts. Now you cannot phantom a person sitting there in his house doing AI making thousands of dollars. You cannot phantom a designer sitting there in a house doing branding design and making seven thousand pounds on one design. You can't phantom it. There are some people that you, you have not. There are some children. If you go to the US, if you go to Silicon Valley, sixteen-year-old programmers that can buy our generation. But if you come here in Nigeria, you say it is doing fraud. That's why our police will be arresting young boys on the road, generalizing them. That's, a, that's the mentality. That's what I'm talking about. So how will you be an investor when you believe everybody is a criminal? Because inside, inside you, maybe you are even doing crime. Yeah. So that's why, you, that's why when you now go and invest outside, and the people like you will now defraud you, you now say everybody is the same thing. You like attracts like. I cannot invest anywhere now and they will defraud me. Somebody was asking me the other day that, uh, okay, so I saw a debit alert on my phone. 
this was in the office. We were having off. Um, I came back on Thursday. So I was, I've been away for a week. So we, uh, we, when I came back, we did a brief meeting. And I just quickly saw a debit alert on my phone. I said, ah. And debit alert said, check withdrawal. I'm like, I didn't give anybody check. And I have all the security protocols in place in my accounts. I was just about to call my accountant. That, what is happening now? I mean, should I quickly move all the remaining money before they go and move it first? And you people don't solve the, the issue. Meanwhile, I had given checks two months ago to a particular person that did wedding. And that one, one month ago to somebody that was leaving our church. I did not even remember. That was the debit alert that I saw. But if it was some people, oh, my, the bank, I don't Edge Another 40 investment mindset is when I am rich, I will invest. 40. You don't invest when you are rich, you, will, you invest to be rich. When I am rich, I will invest. That's under 40 mindset. That is only rich people that invest. No. You will invest your way to riches, to wealth. Another 40 mindset is that I don't have money, so I can't invest. 40. You don't only invest money. See, God, and I take, say God in all religion, whatever you are believing is your God, right? So my own God that I believe in is a good God. It doesn't leave us empty. There will be a drop that you can use to multiply. That drop is what you should invest. So many of us don't have money, but we have time. We have time. Many of the rich people that you saw today, they didn't start by investing money. They started by investing time. Let me give you a scenario. 2011, I graduated from OAU. I was 17. Now, many of you with, with bad belief system now believe, ah, it's a lie, you know that they are 17. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. My aunt is here. She can give you the 411. I was 17. I had finished ICANN. Then, I came to Lagos. In Lagos, I had the opportunity to work for any company that I want to work for. And I suffered for years. In fact, my family were telling me that, how can you be packing certificates? You have masters, you have all this thing. And you have, you, I was focused on business. I was focused on, that's how you go and look for a job. I should go and look for a job. Everything. But me, I knew, I am thankful to the home I came from. From as long, small as five, my dad would take me to his, to his office. He will show me filing, bookkeeping, record keeping. He records what is. He has, you know, check stored. He does check stored. So all the inflow has flow. These are part of, I will, these are part of the, the behaviors of an investor. Uh, that's part two. We are, in, we are in becoming. We'll go to do. But there's no time. So next year, I'm opening an academy called Rich Academy. It's the only school in Nigeria. It's an 18 month college where you pay school fees and you graduate with your school fees and interest. Money. They will give you your school fees back and interest. So, six months coursework, 12 months challenge. To be rich means you must pass the real estate R, investment I, challenge. You cannot be rich if you don't pass the real estate and investment challenge. Real estate is one vehicle of investment. There are several other vehicles, right? But it's the only vehicle that me and I know. God created heaven and earth. He did not create heaven and crypto. He created heaven and earth. So it's the only investment that I know that can help you to create wealth and retain your wealth. Others will help you to create wealth. You cannot retain your wealth in crypto. You can come tomorrow and see that you're, you have been crypto cryptosized. You can use, quickly use it to make money. Fantastic. You can quickly use stocks to make money, but stocks can go down. It just takes the CEO of the company that you are working with to sleep with one prostitute for your stock to go down. Your stock is hanging on the balance of the behaviors of human beings. But your real estate is hanging on the balance of the behavior of the factors that affect the pricing of land in that area. Are you with me? So, it's not only rich people that invest you can invest your time so you have time now you need to now know that okay i invest my time 
to give me skills or tools that I can now become that, that I can now use to start making money. I said just before you invest that money, you cannot. The topic is before you invest that money. So you must make money. So for you to make money, many of us don't have money. If you don't have money, you, you have other things. You have time. So that time, I didn't go and look for any job. I knew that I wanted to start a business. So I went to Dr. Oladipo Clements, who is my mentor. Today, please appreciate him in absentia. He's the CEO and founder of LifePage. That's the first and only company I've ever worked in my life. I stopped collecting salary in 2013 February. Since then, my income, I don't, know, I don't know where my next bread will come from. I must sell before I eat. How many of us can live our life for 10 years with uncertainty? I must sell before I eat. Are you with me? So, I went there. I did not submit my credentials. I went there to go and volunteer my time. Now, I knew that I will not understand business structure as a whole if I go to a big company. Because would, I might not even have access to go to some levels. You, you, maybe you are just in a, they put you in a filing room. You just be putting fire fire. You don't know what is happening in HR. You don't know what is happening in sales and marketing. You don't know what is happening in the boardroom. So I went to a, a medium-sized company as at that time. Now they are a, a big company, uh, a multi-billionaire company uh, in Nigeria. I went there as at that time, and I, I was able to understand the entire process. This was me being intentional. Oh. It was me being intentional. That's part of investment. Though. I already foresaw that, okay, I want to start my own business. I have to invest time to understand how this thing works. I have to invest time to get knowledge on how this thing works. So as that, in that place, I saw how a financial system should be. I copied the uh, vouchers. I copied the uh, uh, statement of financial position. I copied income and expenditure accounts. I went to sales market department. I copied out their sales procedure is everything. I went to HR. I copied out their HR procedure is. I went to so when I went to go and start my own company, do you think it's not going to be easy for me to copy and paste? So many of us want to go and start a company now. We are not going to go and save. That's part of the investment. Number two, I knew that I needed rich when the business will start. So years ahead, I went to start talking sports on top radio. It's not because I, some of the time I don't even watch the sports. I, I only watch Real Madrid. I don't watch Arsenal, Man, you those. I will just abuse people. I will watch your highlight. I, I cannot sit down for 19 minutes to watch another club. It's too boring for me. I'm telling you, with all due respect, I don't know what people are playing. It's only Madrid that plays football. <laughs> and even when Madrid were losing that time, I only watch us in the Champions League. I will not watch us in the league. Where Barcelona were busy using Nigeria to win the league and referee Scandal to win the league for 10 years. I was not watching the league. I only watched the Champions League. It was only one match. Are you with me? So I, I saw that and I went to ground. I just sent Godwin a message, a mail. That was 2015. Or 2014, there, but I can't remember. Sir. And I knew that I need to build momentum. I cannot just come on the radio program, start talking sport, and I start doing business. Let them hear me for years. What is happening today? It, 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 see, wealth takes time. Don't be in a hurry. You have to plan it ahead. I will still go to the doing. We cannot go to the doing. I have, I have five minutes more. Okay. They said they gave me the time. The person that is coming after me, he will, he will break everywhere. Ah, I'm not. I mean, I mean, I'm not even John the Baptist. If you go to, if you go to Malachi to find me. So I went ahead and invested time. That time, I will, I left. I left my parents' house. I started living in Ayobo. I will be driving from Ayobo. Sometimes I rent a bus to stop radio. <laughs> At no salary, they're not, they're not paying me salary to come and talking spot to. I will not still go back. Or sometimes I will waste the evening to allow all the good show. All those times were times of investing time. And many of you know that I know how to talk sports. I am well grounded in tennis. 
Next year, we are starting what they call sport estates. We go change the entire sports media industry. Because many of the sports media guys, that are many of my colleagues, they really don't understand the sport business. I'm a FIBA architect journalist. I've gone to go and cover FIBA games. But I didn't go there with camera. They, I have the license to carry five people. A, a photographer, a videographer, a content writer, myself, and one other person. In my sports media company. But I went alone. I sit down and go and watch what other sports media people that came there are, are, are doing. Why, especially white guys. I see their procedure. I have documented everything down. When we start next year, we will see the difference between us and other sports media companies in Nigeria. That's part of it. That's an invest. That's what you do just before you invest. So if it is business that you want to start, you need to invest time. You don't just start in a hurry. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> hey. So you don't just start in a hurry. Are you with me? The next one is so th that, that's how we did it. Please let's welcome Dr. Lumide Mano. <laughs> you may please have your seats. Welcome, Papa. So we did that so that we can get the reach. For five years, I was talking sports on that radio station. I did not introduce business to it. Five, six, seven years or something. We just introduced business to it last year. Was it not last year? So when we introduced business to last year, was it not easy for you guys to believe us? And believe me. Okay, two years, 20, 2021, when we did the official launch of Cash Gain City. So are you seeing the process? But when you just rush and start like that, and you have not invested the time and money and the energy, you will just be um, accumulating crumbs as results. Another faulty mindset. I don't have, I don't make enough to save. That is why you should save. Because you will spend more money in the future than you spend in the present. So I don't make money to, I don't make enough to save is a faulty mindset. You need to develop that discipline from inception. If the savings is going to be too cobble, it's about the discipline. There are, there, there's a parable in the Bible about talent. Five to one. I love that, that part of the scripture so much. Because it shows that rich people get capacity. And poor people don't get capacity in, in some scenarios. They gave the guy with one and he went to bury it. Thinking that he was doing something. In his mind, honestly speaking, he did it with sincerity of heart. Based on what he knew. You know? And with fear, and that, is, that, that boils down to the belief system and the mindset and the values that he had growing up. So, what are the... What is the second one you should do? You should start imbibing true investment beliefs mindsets and values that's the next thing next thing to do let me jump to so when you join the rich academy next year we'll, talk, we'll continue on, on on that becoming an investor the second thing is to behave or do like an investor that talks about behavior and habits of an investor behavior and habits of an investor see habit is a very strong thing that you must you must See, everybody's addicted to something. That's the truth. And what you're addicted to, it, it's just that you need to chan channel your addiction to something that will help you in your financial growth and your life growth. Don't addict yourself to things that will channel you to destruction and to death or to health disaster or whatever it is. So, how can you become addicted to something that will give you investment leverage or be make you become an investment and, um, an investment person? You need to start behaving like investors. Like I mentioned, you need to become an investor first. You need to start behaving like investors. How do you investors behave? What are their habits? Um, how many books on investments? Who has read the most books on investment this year in this house? Or on finance, this house? Here. How many books are? One, one and a half. One and a half in eight months. I've been, in ten months, right? 
fantastic. So that's uh, like like zero point five pages per day. Any other person? Yes, sir. Five this year, good. So one in two months. Yes, yes, sir. Two, two in ten months. That's one over five. One every five months. So the, how many pages is that book? Is it two thousand pages? How many pages, sir? Three hundred something pages. Something that Doctor Olubide reads in one hour. <laughs> So, those are some of the behaviors of investors are they invest and save first, then spend next. When you are driving a car, when you just start learning, learning to drive a car, you put your hand nine and three. And some of us don't even check our side mirror. Some of us don't check our side mirror at that, at that point in time. Because we are being conscious to be competent to drive. We don't want to make any mistake. Yesterday, when I, when I left the Papa's hotel, and I was coming back, I was driving with one hand. I was checking map with another hand before I put it on the something. No, like, before, if, if, da, if Danfo come near me like this, if, oh, let me use my mom now. Before, when my mom just said, if Danfo come near my mom, ah, what's in Sumo Mio? A cool one, ma. Oh, my Sumo, you go. And you know, I small one. It will intimidate me. But now, they cannot, because she's not intimidated. Because it has now become an unconscious competence. So you need to get to that point where. The behaviors of an investor becomes a routine for you. Becomes a routine for you. Another behavior of an investor is that they keep contingency savings. Because one man's distress is your own opportunity. One man's distress is your own opportunity. One of the things that make people rich is not really the businesses that they do, or they just see one huge opportunity that they have ready cash for. You see a land worth 600 million, you are able to buy it. So why do you think many real estate companies, many real estate CEOs are rich? They know how to go and negotiate for good lands at good prices. And they have the cash on ground. Let me give you a scenario. Ekpe, that all of, you, all of you are going to go and buy today at maybe 5 million and 3 million and, and the likes. Many of us have gone there since 2019. Many. And many have been there since way, way, way earlier. Another behavior of an investment is they spot opportunities way ahead. Way ahead. Another behavior of, of, of an investor is they associate themselves with people that are known better than them. I used to tell people that I have well over 
Papa now is going to be well over 100 years in real estate experience. Sir. And at the last I was summit, it was about 95 years. Because if you had my own experience, 13 years, Papa's experience is over 30 years. Dr. Clement's experience is over 20 years. If I had Pastor Wisdom's experience over 20 years. Um, see, these are the people that I associate myself with. And luckily for me, because I jumped into secondary school early, you know, let me give you the, let me round up with the story of the secondary school. We went to go and drop my elder brother and my elder sister in their new secondary school, St. Francis Catholic Secondary School. And I was to resume and my five with pride. <laughs> so they put me in the back seat wearing St. Benedict's uniform. Then I got to the school. I now saw Joshua Edo Kwai. May God bless you wherever you are for, for taking that step. Because that step changed my life. Joshua Edo Kwai was my primary four classmates in St. Benedict's. Oh, we are open to resume primary five together. On getting to St. Francis, dropping my elder brother and dropping my elder, I saw Joshua wearing secondary school uniform. I said, eh, never. <laughs> that was your, my father doesn't, doesn't come to our school, doesn't drop us. That's why he took us to St. Francis, so you can be walking to school by yourself. He doesn't have time for that thing. You go to work and come. I said, I told my dad, I said, I'm not going to St. Benedict, though. You're not taking me, I'm not going there. Oh. There's no way that this guy is, will, be, will be my senior. No way. I was eight years, eight years old, seven years old, sorry. Seven, ma. Seven, yeah, be. Seven. That time. Around eight. Around eight, yes. Because June, okay, eight, yes. Eight. That time. So I told Joshua, how did you do it? He said, he said that his, his elder sister, Rebecca, was in primary five, so she jumped. And the father said, you cannot be taking Rebecca here, taking you here. Say to her, say, Joshua, you enter, if you're here, scatter, you scatter. <laughs> And I was more brilliant than Joshua. I thought I was more brilliant than Joshua in primary school. So I said, if Joshua can pass the comments, I said, Daddy, let me go and try. So my dad took, because he was a very busy man, he took time for me to go and write the exam. And I passed. I resumed that day with him St. Benedict's uniform. That day. So he went back to his work. And I checked back home that day with my brother and sisters. My brother and sister did not know I was in JSS 1. During break time, I went to their class. They said, what am I doing? I said, ah. I said, I'm not in JSS 1. That was how I finished secondary school at 13 plus. Entered university that age, finished university 17. Joshua Edo Pai. <laughs> Behavior of an investor. They take, they take good risk. Join the Rich Academy next. I beg you, that's the only college that would give you, you pay school fees after the 18 months college. You get your school fees back with interest. You will pass the challenge, your real estate and investment challenge. That's, that's what you have to do to become rich. R-I-C-H. If you don't pass that challenge, you cannot become, become rich. The final step is the achieve like an investor. And that one, I will not say anything on that today. Have I wasted your time? Okay, so because, you know, when we started our organization, we are a very time conscious organization. We started our first company in Chunky Switchery, 2015, in the cotton. By 11 a.m., I've told the story several times. I will never forget the story. By 11 a.m., I was only one in the was in the, I was only one in the hall, and I started speaking to myself, like I started speaking like this. Okay, I was the only one with one of my, I won't say staff, one of my helper. <laughs> As at that time, you can't call their staff, helper. But people started trooping in. But I was speaking. We started by 11. What am I trying to say? My time is up. And I'm going to drop the mic. Please welcome MC Long John. Please let's appreciate uh, Sam Richa once again. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, quite instructive right there. And... Um, I'm sure we all, I mean, we've gained something from this, uh, this uh, expose, you know, from Sam Rucha. I hope we all learned one or two things, yeah? yeah. All right, thank you very much. Um, so if Sam graduated at um, 13, right? 13 plus. So I graduated at nine. So, <laughs> so, so, you believe me, right? Well, um, Sam, your case is rare, actually, because, um, you know, especially children born in the 
90s or early 90s, you know, you have to follow the normal reading. You'd have to go through primary school, secondary school. At the, like the normal time, at 16, you get into... Because I remember in secondary school at the time, I had people at, at I mean, 24 years in the SS1, 24, 25. We even had Walata back in the day. He had guns with him. So when Walata is coming to, if you attend the secondary school, a public secondary school, you understand. Walata has guns and he has bante all over. So Walata is like the defender of the entire school. Even the, even the principal, even the principal of the school said, if you Walata has been told, wow. Several times they've written petition to suspend Walata. But when Walata is the defender of your school, please, what do you do? There was a time in my school back then, eh, they locked our principal inside the bedroom. Okwe lokwe Walata. So if I can remember Walata to date, there was a day I offended this SS3 student because my aunt at the time was in, um, she was in SS3, so I was in JS1. So me, I never knew the guy called Walata. So... Um, it, someone just called me and said, hey, what want me by? Because that time, they speak Yoruba, so there's nothing like Ma Bole, speaking English, no. He said, hey, what want me by? You know, I was very young, looking fresh, and, you know, I was, ah, my daddy said, don't do this. My mommy said, don't do this. That's the kind of boy you know, I was at the time. Very, very gentle. If you, if you slap me, say, I will turn the second year and say, oh, my bye, lay long, put it, it's a problem. But, when he invited me and said, okay, please go and buy. So he gave me, he gave me 100 naira. He said, now, buy rice, beans, and sausage. Then with what soft drink? With 100 naira. So I don't understand what that means. <laughs> so so, so I, I was like, is this plane? What kind of plane is I don't understand. So I was trying to even question him that, ah, this money is not enough. He said... I only give you, I only give you, no, he said, I'm giving you three minutes to get everything and get back here. Because I don't even understand who So I was baffled, I was asking myself, so what exactly is going on? I, I didn't understand. So I stood there, I did not go. He came back three minutes, exactly three minutes. He saw me standing. He said, follow me to my class. When I got to his class, so they drew this car. This imaginary car. <laughs> and the guy said, oh, yeah, my wa. I said, how do I drive a car that is, <laughs> that is drawn on this wall? I thought it was a joke. He said, start driving the car. And you know what? Every other senior, who are you to... Why are you to look at Walata in the face and say that so I I moved to the wall, very naive boy. I started doing like this. But you that only go correct. So my sister at the time was not in class when all this drama was going on. That already they've given me one you know, there's a kind of slap they will give to you. That time they call it redialing. When you want to redial a number, you know. More he died, let me let come. I was already crying, uh, you know, very young boy at the time. So when my sister came back, she came back after the break, saw his young brother crying and weeping. You see, women have power. Oh, please, if you are a lady in the house, please, I celebrate you. May God bless you. May God bless you, all ladies. When my sister came in, she just told Walata, uh, uh, baby, ma she buy now. Ah! Walata to Jepe, I like to with Oman Lejuni. Well, later I said, uh-uh, you want to know, oh, my God, see, boy, you should now. And after everything, well, later I said, don't worry, till I leave this school. Ma, she bo she went. So, let me know, a little more to go, she want to keep my shape, let me know, she pay a bet, let me know, money go, no, my one more So, so, you know, they say power, power intoxicates. Uh, too much power intoxicates. So, um, people should appreciate me now. I've been talking since, uh -uh. So as you, all know, as you all know, we have our dad in the house, but he, he won't come to speak now, but uh, much later after breakfast. Please, let's appreciate my own pastor, Dr. Olumi. Just appreciate him. Wherever. See, you may not understand why I'm saying this. You may not understand, but by the time, by the time he comes up to speak, you would even question why I didn't do this like 10 times. 
trust me. You would uh, you question me, oh, oh yeah, my celebrate. Well, even showing back to Ambole like oh yeah, my shaking get back but you understand what I'm saying. The things we feed on every Sunday. Ah no, ah, come on, come on. You see when I when I when I joined this church at the time, there were things that there were things I didn't really know. So when sometimes when he speaks or tells us certain things, I jot down and you know, there was a time I, so I went out, I think it was in 2021, I went somewhere to speak. As I was speaking, when I'm done, there's a Omo Shano gone. Yeah, and yeah, team more coco. The bar in yak bay. So when you're under the right mentorship, there's no way. You, Sam Marija has said a lot. And trust me, Sam was not like this a few years back. It wasn't like this. But when you're under the mentorship of ha, let me go and let you want motion sorry. So just to tell you, it's not. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's something that you will gain so much while you are here. We gave him a particular time to speak, but I know that at a point he will tell us, Daddy, but just 6 p.m. and I'm telling you that is that is the guarantee I have that by the time he's done speaking, you will be convinced that you didn't waste your time here and everything you, you will hear from this place, if you, if you are the type that you are not just the talker, you are the doer, then I'm sure there's going to be a result, you know, after, after his own um, speaking uh, engagement. So, um, Victoria, I hope uh, the breakfast is... Yeah, so, um, please, I also want to ask, if you are here and you are buying fuel for 200 naira, please just raise your hand. <laughs> if you are buying fuel for 200 naira. Uh -uh. So, there's a place I can actually recommend. It's not in Iko Why are Ikorodu people tackling me now? Come on. Ikorodu people. I understand that I said what I'm not supposed to say. But if you go, ah, where is I want to call my Benny Mota. I want my Benny Kini. Yes, I live in Lagos State. I live in Berigbe. I'm a Kony me now. Oh, my God. I'm a Lagos State born, bred. So where do you live? I live in Berigbe. But the truth is that you can live anywhere in Lagos. And you can claim Lagos. Nobody is going to, to disturb you. So as regards the fuel issue I'm talking about, if you are, I can recommend a particular place where they, where they sell fuel for 215 naira. But, uh, and no, the thing is, in this Lagos, yes, there's, there's somebody that is very diligent in doing that in this Lagos. Ah, Nigerians, they like if I go. Okay, all right. So, I said something that I said information is what? Currency. Information is what? Currency. Currency. So, um, what you do is, if you need that information, uh, come on, just know, just a token of 2,500. So, I, I'm sure, Emma told me 100, I'll be 115B. Take back by 25, Joe. I think that would actually, you know, that would make my day if I get 25 from every other person. And so you can get your fuel for as any amount as you want. And this, this person I'm talking about, she's, she's a Yoruba woman. She has a filling station in this Lagos. And the filling station is located somewhere around that equal, do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so it's, it's located. And the name of the filling station is Iabola Tito and Co. Limited. So if you, if, you, if you so desire to buy fuel, please, when your car knocks down on Tommy Land Bridge, please don't come and meet me. <laughs> that's, that's actually a rare, a rare advice. So, um, before we move on, I quickly want to do something. I need, I just need five people. Although you will go on, you will go on with something. Yeah, courtesy of me. So I need five people. But basically, I think the five people, I just want to get much, much younger people. I don't want, yeah, I don't want to disturb our, our, our daddies and our mommies. So, yeah, okay, please, you can come. Thank you. Okay, you can come. You can come. Yes. Who else? Okay. Okay, you can come, sir. Okay. I don't have my book here, though. So, I can't find it. 
So this is what I want us to do. Um, you, you are going to, you're going to start with a word. No, this is it. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to end with a word. This particular word that says I O N. So any word that ends with I O N. So you start with it, you continue like that, then you come back. Yes, until we'll find somebody who cannot get that word then. You exit out of the... It's a game. It's just a simple game. So, do you understand the game? Eh? Randomly. No, no, no. It has to, it has to be like this. So you start here and go and come. Okay. So, okay. Are you, are you ready? You're not done. Okay, you're still thinking. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Or should we do a word or we do... Okay, so let's start with the word. Correction. Diction. Addiction. Mention. Infatuation. Education. Suppression. Re um, rota rotation. <laughs> rotation. <laughs> Medication. You're out of the game. You, you have to be, you have to think very smart. You don't have to, yeah, very fast. Thank you very much. So we, please, let's appreciate him. So, so this time, we're doing states in Nigeria. Not state and capital, please. States, states. Let's go. Imo. Akwa Ibom. I have an alibi. I was swallowing what I was eating. But the power vested on me. As the INEC chairman, I asked you to stay. Imo. Akwa Ibom. Nasarawa. Lagos. Oyo. Kanu. Imo. Imo. So this is it. You're supposed to, when you are done, you just pass the mic. You don't need to struggle for it. So I'll pardon you that you can start again. No. Let's do capital. Castina. Ikeja. Oyo. Loko. No, no, I'm not I'm not doing cars. I'm not doing cars. So let's do Let's do churches. Let's go. Redeem. Living faith. Word of faith. The Palai. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our winner. Please let's appreciate him. <laughs> yeah, so you would, I'll see you at the end of, of the, yeah, the event. Um, so if you still want to, please, um, Vicky, Victoria, are we good? Okay, just a few minutes. So um, we still have luxury of getting four more people to come. Please, four people, four people, four people. Thank you, sir. Please, if you can have a lady, I don't mind. If you can have a lady, I don't mind. It shouldn't be all, all men affair. Thank you, sir. Okay. Can I have one more person? Okay, Elijah, you want to join us? Thank you. Thank you very much. So, now we'll start with... Now let's start with... So let's start with um, schools in Nigeria. Universities, not polytechnics. Let's go. <laughs> yes, universities, whether private, public, or whatever. Universities, not polytechnics. Thank you. Uni Law. Law. Taisho Law. OAU. University of Ibadan. Was. Uni Law. Convenant. Unsuka.
Okay, so let's do country then. US. Canada. Saudi Arabia. Australia. Holland. Thank you very much, Elijah. Let's appreciate it. So let's do it like this. So when the mic gets to you, you repeat and return back. Do you understand? So that's to much more better that way. So um, let's do Africa countries. Yeah. Nigeria. South Africa. Kenya. Gambia. Hey. Egypt. Togo. Zimbabwe. Benin. Cameroon. Angola. Now um, Nairobi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're done. We're done with with Africa. So let's do. No. So let's do um, football clubs in Nigeria. Let's go. Caterpillar, Eimba, shooting stars. You have to be very fast with it. So. If Try to pause and think. That means you are the act of the game. So let's start again. Can I feel it? Yimba. Shooting stars. MFA. Insurance. Bene. Play to United. <laughs> okay, so um, let's do cars. Cars, yes. Cars. Vehicle. <laughs> what, please? Is there, okay, there's even between vehicle and car. <sighs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so let's go. Car. Cars, yeah. Yeah, model. Yes, car models. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, car, car. Please don't call. People should not confuse my brain. Car, you can't. Eh, I'm going to check my design. I'm going to check my design. Eh? That's brand name, Abi. Yes, okay. Let's let's leave let's leave cars. Let's do. Um, no. So let's do fruits. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, vegetable. So there is a school called Mufulani in the battle. Vegetable is a kind of fruit. Please don't blame them. <laughs> so I'll pardon you for this. Uh, so let's go again. Fruit, right? Yeah. Mongo. Orange. Tangerine. 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 Banana. Pear. Popo. Pineapple. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Please, let's appreciate him. Thank you very much, sir. So I think um, at this stage, we would... Um, so I'd like to invite Stella Wichway on this side of the platform. Please, Stella. Please, can you welcome Stella with a round of applause? Thank you, everyone, for being amazing. I trust we've been learning so far, and we've gotten um, value for our time. Okay, so immediately, no paparazzi. We're going to be going straight into the next segment, and we have a grand mentor in the house. Um, fortunately for me, he's also my pastor, my mentor. He has been a blessing to me and, you know, my family. I started attending um, his church at age 13. And now I'm 30, and I'm really, really wise for my age. Okay, so let's welcome the Chairman Board of Advisory for Team Limited, the President, the Billionaires Conclave, the GCEO Common Sense Group, and the world-renowned financial consultant for different generations. Welcome our very own Dr. Olumide Emmanuel with a standing ovation. With a round of applause, please, you can do it better. Make it louder. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Hello, billionaires. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. 
I believe we've been enjoying ourselves and getting vital information that will help position us for wealth creation. Um, my joy is continually boosted every time I see uh, my children and my mentees growing and doing amazing things. One of the joy of mentorship and the joy of fatherhood is to be alive to see your children grow to begin to make impacts. And many of the people that I've had the privilege to father mentor have been privileged to be alive to see them growing in leaps and bounds and doing amazing things. And I want to once again use this opportunity to give glory to God and also thank God for their lives. So let's appreciate Sam for being a good student and a good son. It's one thing to teach. It's one thing for the student to learn and to practice. So and for every one of you that have taken time out to be here today, I believe that our time together today will be impactful. Thank you. And beneficial to you. Um, I have some of my books here. Every time I move around, I like to go with my books because even if we spend the entire day together, there will be a lot of things that we will not touch. Now, the School of Money book is a book that has been a tremendous blessing and transformed lives all over the world. So if you have never gotten a copy of the School of Money book, make sure you get a copy. Uh, we have hard cover and soft cover of the School of Money book. So the hard cover for the School of Money book is 30,000 Naira. The soft cover is 20,000 Naira. And then we have the Pathway to Wealth, How to Be a Millionaire. Um, that one is uh, 10,000 Naira. And then we have the uh, other book, the Jubilee Pack. It contains five products, four books, and an audio program. So School of Money, you either get the ad cover at 30,000 or the soft cover at 20,000, and then you get the pathway to wealth. Um, so prepare yourself to take advantage of that. And as you do, you will thank me later. Okay, so I've been asked to talk about two things that um, I'm going to put together. How to investigate before you invest. And then global investment opportunities. So I'm going to talk to us about these two things all together. And then we'll have opportunity to ask questions later. So if you have any question uh, that you want to ask, just feel free. Document your questions. And then I'll be... Uh, privilege to answer the question. Now, every time you hear the word investment, every time you hear the word investment, you need to understand that investment is two-sided. There are always two sides to every investment. One side to the investment is the risk aspect of that investment. And the other side of the investment is the return aspect of that investment. And you probably have heard it said over and over again that the greater the risk, the greater the return. Now, the reason why that is said is because every time you hear investment, just know that the very word investment itself introduces risk and introduces returns. But you see, the challenge with many people is because of lack of understanding of the way uh, the investment world works. Every time they hear investment, all they are thinking of is, what is the return? What's the return? And because they are so concerned about what the return will be, the question they are always asking is also about the return. And most of the time, because they have not asked the second question of the risk aspect, they enter into the investment thinking only of the return. And then when the risk aspect shows up, they begin to wonder, but you told me there will be a return. Yes, there will be a return, but there is also a risk. <laughs> and when you ask the question about the return, we told you, you didn't ask question about risk. If you have asked the question about risk, you probably have gotten the information to now help you to make the right kind of decision. So as we look into the importance of investigating before you invest, you need to understand that investment is two-sided. There's risk 
and then there is return. Now, note this. If investment is two-sided, risk and return, it therefore means that there is no risk-free investment. There is no risk-free investment. So, if anyone tells you, oh, this investment, there is no risk at all, even that person himself is a risk. Because that person does not control their life. The person telling you there is no risk may die today. And by tomorrow, you discover that the money you paid entered the account, but even himself cannot collect it because he's no more alive. We have bought land before where we paid 40 million into an account. And the person was supposed to be representing a family. And we paid into UBA. Kuto, Abe Kuta, I will not forget. We paid the money, and two weeks later, the man died. And the family told us, we have not paid for that. I said, but he let me Baba represent me. Baba, I don't account, Baba. I don't know how to So, <laughs> did we pay? Yes. But even the person, was, even the wife couldn't touch the money. Hello? Then we had to do probate, next of kin. As, I was, as I'm speaking to you right now, the money never came out. 40 million, just like that. Hello? And we had to pay again to the family. So, you need to understand that when we are talking about investment, there is no risk-free investment. So, if there is no risk-free investment, it therefore means that if you are going to investigate before you invest, one of the things you need to begin to do is to begin to look at the risk aspect first before we go into the return aspect. So, there are four things you can do when it comes to the risk aspect of investment. Number one, you can avoid the risk. And say, you know what? I don't want to be involved in this. I don't have time. Three weeks ago, someone had consulted me to seek counsel on what to do and he said, sir, we have 17 million. That's all we have as a family. And me and my wife, we are just thinking. We've been following you. And this 17 million now, huh, we don't know. Should we just put it in a fixed deposit? Or should we use it to buy dollar? Or should we use it to put it in an investment? So they ask all kind of questions. And I told him, every time you ask questions about investment, we also have to ask you questions before you can answer you. And question one is, what is your investment goal? This 17 million, now why are you calling me on what to do with it? Is it because you want to save it for the future? Is it because you want to invest it for a return? So what is your goal for that? We need to know. Because your goal determines the counsel that we will give to you. I said number two, what is your risk appetite? How much risk are you willing to take with the 17? Because some people can be risky and they go and do forest and crypto and they kryptonize their life. So how much risk are you willing to take? Question three, how much do you have? I already know that's 17. Question four, how long do you have? Is it the one you want to go, go, go? I want to give you 17 million now so that in three months I will get 30 million. Is it now, 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 now? So what exactly? So by the time we're through and I told him a lot of things he could do, I gave him options. I didn't hear from him again. Then this weekend, I heard from him. He said, sorry, sir, that we did not get back to you. When I spoke to my wife about all our discussion, we, he just said, let's just put the money in fixed deposit. Let's be seeing our money. So I said, no problem. Now, they are trying to avoid risk. So they say, let's just keep it in fixed deposit. But that also is risky because the bank can fold up. <laughs> but now they have avoided risk, but so they have brought their risk to you know a level where so number two, you can transfer your risk. So the investment is risky, but you can transfer the risk. And when you transfer the risk, it means that. If anything goes wrong, it is not really you that will suffer. It is somebody else that will suffer. Number three, you can manage the risk. 
You can do what? You can manage the risk and say, okay, you know what? Since this is the risk, let me not put all this money there. Let me put this one so that in case I lose it, I will still be able to survive. So instead of carrying the whole 70 million into one, you can say, okay, let's put five. If the five goes, we still have 12. So you can manage it. And number four, you can take informed and calculated risk. Because you already now know that any investment has that risk element. You can now get all the information that you need to take, get, and then look at it and do your calculation. Let's, let's go. Take informed and calculated risk. When it comes to investigating before you invest, there are a few facts that I want you to note. And I beg you to please listen attentively to this point. There are things I have said for years that people disagree with. But when they grow up, they agree. <laughs> I don't know what level of life you operate in. I don't know what mindset you operate with. But there are things that some of us have seen and experienced that when we tell people, they don't believe until they experience it. So number one, facts. There are irresponsible and fraudulent people, organizations, and schemes. There are irresponsible people, organizations, and schemes. Many of us are so naive. And because we are simple-minded, we think that everybody is good. We don't know that some people can sit down. And all they are thinking of is how to come up with a new fraud. How to deceive people. All they are thinking of is how to lose life. Hello? So there are what? There are irresponsible individuals, organizations, and schemes. So every time you see an investment opportunity being peddled, understand that not all those investment opportunities are real. Not all those that are peddling those investment opportunities are good people. If you think that everybody is good just because you saw them on social media, just because you saw them, no, 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 no. Do you know that there is something about investment that you need to understand? There are people that take picture with people just to use the people's picture to deceive other people. And when you see them in the picture, you say, ah, he took picture with governor. He took picture with the so he must be. No, it's, it's not true. Hello, as I'm here now, some people say, oh, can I take service? They take picture. Does it mean I know them? No. Number two, there are irresponsible investors. Irresponsible, lazy, and greedy investors. So, just as there are irresponsible people, organizations, and schemes, there are also irresponsible, greedy, and lazy investors. If you are not irresponsible, why are you not investigating before you invest? If you are not lazy, why are you not doing your due diligence? Hello? Almost every month, if not every week, we have all kinds of schemes and scams. WhatsApp group, Facebook group, all manner group. They'll say, oh, Lumine Emmanuel is the manager. Invest in crypto, invest in foreign, invest in this. Bring 50,000, you get 100,000. And a lot of useless people irresponsible, lazy, stupid people, we carry money and give them. You know the amazing thing? They put a little bit of picture there. They put a little bit of name there and they say you should pay into an account who go to Collins. <laughs> and you paid. You are a fool. You are stupid. You are greedy. You are irresponsible. You are lazy. Is after you now pay and they dupe you, you will now call my office. So you knew my number. <laughs> you didn't just, hey, 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 hello, hello, what happened? Hey, no, 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 no. I said, ah, but you are calling us now. You could have made this call before you made the payment. Hey, but I did it because of you. I've been following you. You are a fool. You are not following me. If you are following me, you know I don't do crypto. 
If you are following me, you know I don't do forest. If you are following me, you will know that this is not who I am. You know my name is not Ugojuku. <laughs> you are just a greedy, stupid, lazy investor. You are irresponsible. Hello? I don't want to go by Blicka. But a man in the Bible said, I bought a land. I paid for a land. I want to go and see it. He paid for land we never see. <laughs> Hello? So most of the time, the reason why we have this thing continuing is because while there are irresponsible individuals, organizations and schemes, there are irresponsible, lazy and greedy investors. Ah, my brother, have you heard? Ah, eh, WKG. Ah, WKG is ready now. If you just put 50,000, you get 500. It doesn't have father, mother, brother, sister. Now you in love. Somebody that has not called you for two years. Now he's calling you now. He's chatting you up. Why? It's because you are greedy. Because you want something for nothing. Number three. In Nigeria, you can do everything right and still be wrong. Hello? You can do everything right and still be wrong. So no, I don't agree with that. Just do the right thing. Just do the right thing. Just do the right thing. No problem. You will learn later. When you are in Nigeria, you are in a chaotic, disorganized environment where there is no justice. Where the government itself can be your criminal enemy. Hello? So you can do everything right and end up being wrong. Listen, when you listen to people, in fact, even when you do insurance, they have something they call the act of God. <laughs> There's no insurance against it. And most of what they call the act of God is actually the act of man. Hello? When a building collapses, is it God? But they say it's an act of God. Because there is a man that is building the house that didn't follow the rules. But they say it's an act of God. Hello? You can do everything right and still be wrong. So how can that happen? Okay. Let me give you maybe like three examples. And then you tell me who is wrong. So a man starts a transportation business. Lagos to Ghana. He gets a bus. And he sees that the place is really low. And he was making a lot of money. He said, ah, the way I'm making money, there's so much customer. I don't have money to buy more buses. Let me invite other people to join. So he does an advert. And he says, one boss is 12 million. If you bring 1 million, 12 of you, one boss. I will be giving you 10, 10% every month. Good business deal. So everybody, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, put money together. So he bought the bosses, did all he was supposed to do, and started the business. First month, everybody got their 10%. Second month, everybody got their 10%. Third month, everybody got their 10%. Fourth month, everybody got their 10%. Fifth month, Buhari closed border. So the guy is doing well and one day he wakes up, border is closed. So now he has 28 brand new bosses sitting in his office compound. No money. And he has over 300 investors expecting 10% next month. What did the guy do wrong? Nothing. He did everything right, but now he's wrong. As I speak to you now, you don't want to know the end of the story. They started invading. You are a thief. You are a liar. But we all heard the news. Is he the one that closed the border? Why can't we be reasonable? Why can't we understand with our fellow human being? Just because you put money there. That's investment. It's a risk. We are all victims. We are supposed to join him to fight. Now you are fighting him. The form union before you know it. EFCC, ICPC, anti-fraud. Hello? That's what? You want more example? Hello? So you can do everything right and still be wrong. 
go and study the story of Falonsho Alakija. She was in court with the government for over 20 years to fight for her rights. How many people have money to fight for 20 years? To fight for your rights. Hello? I sent a video to my platform, to my guys, of Adeleke's son. Adeleke was the one that owns the entire Morocco. Morocco is the he owns the whole of Morocco. He bought it for seven million dollars from the government in 1972 or thereabouts. Seven million dollars. He paid and has all the documents. Then the military came and said they cannot. They took over the land, everything scattered. After military went, he started fighting government. Went to court. He finally won the case, and they said, "Okay, well, we cannot give you Morocco again because we have shared it. We are using it for something else. So what do you want?" He said, "Give me the lagoon." What you are calling Banana Island today, that man is the owner of the whole land. He said, give me the lagoon. They said, what do you want to do with lagoon? He said, just give me lagoon. They said, should we refund your money? He said, no, give me lagoon. So they gave him lagoon. He sold all his properties abroad and began to dredge and fill the lagoon to have the first island, man-made island in the whole of Africa. Banana Island. That man, Singwandeli, did that job. As he finished the job, Lagos State government came and said, we are the owner of the land. <laughs> Federal government does not have jurisdiction over Lagoon. They cannot ask. To cut a long story short, the man died mysteriously in the midst of the case. That's how his family went back into poverty. A billionaire in dollars became almost because Nigeria happened to him. Today, Banana Island is still there. He doesn't have one plot inside of something he has, something he did by himself. And all the rich people in Nigeria are sitting on somebody else's sweat. Hello? You can do everything right and still be wrong. Why am I saying this? We are talking of investigating before you even, but you need to know some facts. Everybody you are blaming are not bad people. All the people you are calling fraud, they are not frauds. They are also victims of Nigeria. Hello? I'm presently paying 120 million naira to rebuy a land I finished paying for in 2003. I bought the land in 2003, got CFO in 2007, fenced it fully, and sold. All the people I sold to is a pastor. We are saved. They bought and did nothing. I can't do anything with the land. It's no more my own. I've sold it, but the land is there. About 13 years later, 2010, or seven years, 2010, and other people went to court. So they've been in court for 13 years. So they now say that, oh, the family I bought from is not the real family. They are the real family. If there was no land there, would they go to court? It was about Ojoko, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006. Ah, ah. Everywhere was developing. It's only this bush remaining here. Ah. The people that bought the land in 2001, 2002, that didn't show up, they now started showing up now. Where is our land? He you say you are a pastor. And what happened? So you knew there was a land somewhere, you abandoned it. Hello? So I used my connection to investigate the case. And I discovered that the family that won the case does not own the land. They actually paid somebody and it was the, the family I bought the land from, they are fighting. So it is one of the people in the family that went to instigate them and gave them documents from his own family to fight his own family from behind. So I met with all the people. Basically, I called the vice president, called all the people, and I said, hey guys, this must not happen to me. So they checked and we saw that, okay, this is a bad deal. That these people are fraud. So if we go to appeal, we are going to win. But appeal may take another 10 years. Am I going to be waiting for 10 years for them to scatter the ground? Hello? So we applied. And they said the earliest date in appeal is 2025. Just to fix dates for us to go and start. That they will hear it first. We will now start the journey. 2025. 2025. The 
lawyer that sand. We say get, we get all the sand. All the sand that we do the case that have the evidence. Ah, my win. Ah, all fraud, all fraud, Jenny. 40 million. For sand. A P is twenty twenty five first date. Ah, Pastor, ah, I lay on bed. I want to register on my bed date. You want to say? But only she match. Only she match twenty twenty four. One five million. So to move date, five million to forty five. So I went to the secret place of the Most High, and I said, Father, what seest thou? So I prayed and I slept. The next morning, I just heard it. Make peace with thy enemy on the way to court. It's Bible. It's inside Bible. Make peace <laughs> with thy enemy on the way. <laughs> because when I bought the land, it was 50,000. Now the land is 6 million per plot. You can do everything right. So question. If I don't have 120 now to pay, we will lose everything. You will see my name in the paper. It's 419 Pastor. Oh, I love you. And all of you will be sharing it. You will be liking it. Hello? So it is your responsibility to investigate before you invest. It is your responsibility to do your due diligence. So how do I investigate before I invest? There are seven things that will help you do that. Seven things. Seven Things that will help you to invest. Number one, who is the person behind the investment? Who is the person behind the investment? I'm presently a board member of about 23 different companies. I'm a board chairman for almost 10 of them. And when people invite me to come and become a board member or board whatever, I charge them. I take them through a screening. They have a form they will fill. I will do my due diligence. Then I will now charge them money. There is sitting allowance. There is annual allowance. There are all kinds of things I charge them. And some of them say, ah, Pastor, okay, let me say, forget this one to be Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Counseling is free. Consultancy attracts a fee. Where there is a voice, there is an invoice. Say, I say, listen to me. I know the Bible. You say, I will make your name great. I said, the name is so great that it draws money. The grace is so powerful that money flows. I said, my name on your document, my picture on your document alone will produce money that adverts will never produce. Hello? So let me give you like three examples. So these young boys came and I said, look, he said, ah, that we can't afford that. I said, let me tell you something. He said, we have a program. I said, okay, you want me to come? I said, leave whatever we are discussing. I said, I will come for your program. And I will, I will be there. Put my name on the poster. Do advert. Do the program. And by virtue of me coming to your program, tell me the difference you will see. And then you will know that what I'm charging you is small. Two days later, they come and say, sir, I want to come and see you. We are ready now. I said, ready for what? I said, that is, I said, ah, what's happened? They said, when I was in the meeting, I spoke and I left, that a woman, as I was going, a woman stood up and was going. He said, no, we are not done. He said, no, I'm done. I went to, he said, so please, um, I just came because I saw Luke, I just wanted to be sure that he's associated with this thing. And it, she dropped eight million. <laughs> So, so, so you push, you bring form, she transfer eight million. They bring the form to my office. That that Olubinde is involved. See he? <laughs> Hello. Somebody else that I'm part of the board. Just to tell you some of the things that people don't know, because I am part of the board, they need to inform me before they do a lot of things. 
And there is a prophetic dimension to this thing also. There's a supernatural dimension. So, he has been paying the money. He paid for year one. He paid for year two. In year three, I did not know that his partners and his assistants and others, ah, you know, why should be, this guy is your pastor now. Why are you still paying him? You boy in his church, you pay tight. You give, why are you still paying him money? Why, why? This money is collecting as much. And he just comes from meeting. And all these things is on Facebook. We can go and get it on Facebook. We can get it on YouTube. It's there. It's the money. You boy just say, hey. I didn't know. It's later I knew. He kept telling me, hey, you don't understand covering and grace. That you don't understand all the things that is working that you think we are the one doing it. You don't know that there is something that is backing us up. So he called me. They were on their way to sign a 2.1 billion contract that will have either given them a breakthrough or ruined the company. Everything was set. Everything was set. They were on their way to sign. He just called me. And I was in the midst of prayer that morning. And I sensed that one of my children was about to enter fire. I didn't know who it was. So when he called me, he said, sir, I, love you. Can you call? I forgot to tell you. Everything is fine. fine. It's a breakthrough, sir. It's a breakthrough, sir. We're going to sign. And I said, what's this all about? So he told me, I said, don't go. I want the motto, they want the way. I said, don't go. I said, don't sign. I said, do not end well. I said, I saw you drowning. I don't know. I said, I saw you drowning. Don't go. So the guy called the air said, Ah, what's that? Bow pastor is a man control life in here. Oh God, as he said to me, as he said, search until we'll go verification, payment plan, it's clean. Three weeks later, they opened the dam. You know the dam they opened on Lagos, but that's three weeks later, they opened the dam. The water was almost at the bridge. That was the land they were supposed to go and pay for. And they were supposed to, they have collected money from different investors. It took almost six months for that water to even go down. Listen to me. Hello? Who is behind the something? 